Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be picking our Overlook slash Underrated England 11 from the Premier League era. Uh, just a quick run through the rules. It can be any England player from 92 onwards, can be selected. It'll be a 4-4-2 formation. Uncapped players can be picked and they can be overlooked or underrated for different reasons. Whereas for injuries, playing in the wrong era, wrong manager, wild cost players in their positions, etc. Uh, subscribe to Gadget Football if you're new around there. Let us know your underrated England 11s in the comments below. It'd be great to read those. So, uh, lads, thanks for joining. We've got plenty of uh, positions to go through, plenty of names to debate. Um, also, we'll be picking our own teams um, and honourable mentions as well, which there are plenty. Um, and that's just the uh, strikers. Um, so, without further ado, let's go um, with goalkeeper. So, Dennis, we'll start with you, mate. Who have you got in between the sticks and who else did you consider? Well, uh, so... Between the sticks, despite having 23 caps, I feel if he was born in any other era, or maybe not any other, but if he was born a few years earlier or a few years later, he'd have treble that. And that's Nigel Martin, who had the <laughs> oh, yeah, misfortune of being in the exact same time as David Seaman, one of the best keepers this country's ever produced. Uh, I think he would have been the consistency needed because David James was named England's number one at the wrong period of his life. I think also he would have been very consistent, added consistency uh, as well as making up for the lack of age of Peter Shilton if he was a few years younger and got a few more seasons under his belt by Italia 90 as well. I know it's slightly out of the context of this video, but I feel he would have got more caps in that era, definitely. Um, honourable mention probably Ben Foster, for, but obviously he did get, well, got quite a few caps, but he was in the same era as sort of Joe Hart. Um, as well as prime David James. Um, and then obviously from a little bit of bias, an honorable mention from Rob Green. <laughs> but yeah. Martin is 100% my uh, safe hands in goal. So ah, Good pun. Um, right, so safe bet, uh, Dennis. So, uh, okay, Mark, who have you got between the sticks? Yeah, I've um, I'll start on the honorable mentions first, just because they are the same as what, uh, well, one of the ones, <laughs> Rob Green, the same as Dennis. Um, I think obviously... Was was pretty good. I think his England career got ruined by Rio a little bit with that sending off in that last qualifier before that World Cup, and then obviously the uh, I think that was a bit of a hangover going into that USA game in that World Cup. Um, my other honourable mention is is Nigel Martin for sort of similar reasons to what Dennis has said. You know, twenty odd cap, twenty three caps. Um, obviously, fantastic goalkeeper. Although I do slightly disagree because he would have had competition with uh, Chris Woods at the early part of the. 90s who was um who was the number one for, for quite some period but um my pick actually i've gone with um with tim flowers uh oh, well, 11 caps uh obviously 11 caps um and when southampton sold him to blackburn uh they sold him for a, a record fee for a goalkeeper at that point two and a half million or 2.4 million sorry mm. um obviously league title winner as well uh lots of games for for blackburn again a bit of a surprise that he probably didn't play more um but i think really because of some guys, Dennis has already rightly pointed out, called David Seaman. Um, it, it, you know, it sort of rendered his England career null and void, uh, pretty much to be fair. But, um, yeah, I've, I really like watching him play, although, uh, I'm sure we all remember the the blooper, uh, Southampton with Matt Letizia, uh, yeah. Ewood Park, where uh, he did a divot straight over his head as he's dived over it. Um, so yeah, but other than that, it was a yeah, fantastic goalie. Yeah, what a shout, Mark. Uh, Charles, who have you got as your underrated keeper? I've gone on um, slightly under the radar um, in terms of, you know, all of these players, well, all bar a few of these players I've got in my team will be players that I've, you know, either watched live or on telly or whatever. Um, and I think one person that probably could have got a few more caps for England, considering kind of the weakness in the competition during his time, um, uh, you know, playing for England or when he made his caps was Tom Heaton. I think Tom Heaton... Um, yeah got three caps for England altogether. Um, and, I, you know, I don't think he's an exceptional goalie or anything, but I thought he was probably, I've always respected him. I've always liked him. Um, and I think he was kind of, he, yeah, he was kind of peaking in a, in a time where England goalkeepers weren't really a certainty. And I think he probably, you know, he, he's got three caps to his name, but I certainly think he could have got um, a few more at least. Again, he's not, you know, he's not the, uh, the greatest goalkeeper that England have ever seen, but um, I certainly think he could have had more than three caps to his name. Yeah, nice. Mate. Any others you considered? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, Rob Green, but I think, 
obviously it's it's hard to put Rob Green in because obviously, you know, although he was great as a club guy, um, his international career was uh, unfortunately uh, marred by a certain incident in the World Cup. And so it's kind of, it was hard to put him in just because also I think he's he's had, what, 12 caps or something like that, which, yeah, yeah. is quite small. But um, I thought I'd, I'd side on, um, on the lesser capped Tom Heaton. Um, yeah, so, yeah, he'd be my goalkeeper pick. No, good show, mate. Okay, so um, so my mentions, a few have been mentioned already. So Rob Green, um, I think, obviously, you know, you had that mistake in 2010, but I think he would have gone to the 2006 World Cup. But he got injured for, this is a throwback, England B, a B international, he got injured. I think he would have gone to the finals. And I think around that time, Paul Robinson wasn't exactly in brilliant form for England as well. Um, you know, particularly that the disaster 08 uh, qualification where Steve McLaren was in charge. I think, you know, Robert Green should have been uh, probably England's number one around that time, or certainly in the in the squads anyway. Uh, ben Foster, as you guys have mentioned, um, you know, in the cycling GK was a very good goalie, but only the eight caps, and he was treated absolutely terribly by Fabio Capello. Um, retired from internationals for a couple of years. If, uh, if any, anyone watching hasn't seen the uh, clip from uh, Jack Mates Happy Hour, his first appearance, go and watch it. Um, it's, yeah, Capello comes off terribly, not for the first time by an ex in England in the national that played under him. Uh, yeah, Tim Flowers are really considered as well. Um, yeah, Premier League winner. Um, unfortunately, he played in the same era as the world class David Seaman. Another keeper I considered was Ian Walker, only got the four caps. Um, pretty, uh, you know, um, yeah, understated goalie, only, only the four caps. But uh, in the end, my pick, same as you, Dennis, I've gone for Noel Jim Martin. Um, yeah. Again, if David Seaman was at around Noel Jamal, I think would have been our number one for a good few years. Um, and obviously, like with the Beckham documentary, has been out recently, and you know the, the equalising against Greece. But not being funny, I watched the highlights of that game the other day, and Noel Jamal was in goal that day against Greece. Um, and I pulled a couple of really good saves, and just to keep it at two one, I don't think England would have come back if we ended up three one or four one up, as it could have been if Martin were in goal, but. Uh, yeah, I've gone for uh, yeah, Noel Jermartin. So um, he's my goalie. So uh, let's move into the back four. Uh, Mark, who have you got as your right back? And who else did you consider? Um, I've only, only one choice, really, for me. Um, and kind of the reason that I've gone for this player is because, unfortunately, his career was um, you know, a couple of really bad knee injuries. Uh, Nathaniel Klein um, is who I've picked. Oh. Um, 14 caps, obviously, Crystal Palace, Southampton and, and Liverpool. And I think the contract with um, Palace ended in like the summer. Um, but I, I, I quite liked him, partly because I've, I've done a slight variation. I've gone more for a 4-4-2 diamond than a sort of flat 4-4-2. And I was sort of thinking that um, uh, Klein, obviously quite an attacking player. Um, and I think he, if you think for a while, obviously he was, as I say, clearly the first choice uh, right back for, uh, for Liverpool. Um, and for when... He went there. Obviously, he was keeping Trent out of the team for for quite some time, partly because yeah. he was still sort of breaking through. And I do kind of like wonder how his career would have gone if he hadn't had the the serious injuries. And obviously, by the time he'd come back, his his time had gone because because Trent had, had got his team place in the, uh, obviously yeah. the Liverpool team and um, certainly a, a member of the of the squad at, at the very least. But yeah, for me, there wasn't there wasn't really anybody else that I could think of that that I thought was a was an underrated player. Yeah, that's a good shout, Mark. How many caps did Klein get, Mark? 14. That's yeah, not so, a lot, is it? Yeah. No, not really. I mean, I think he, he featured in uh, the 2016 Euros. He was in, in part of that oh, yeah. um, sort of squad. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I think the injuries and, and probably again, Carl Walker for a, a while in yeah. England uh, set up keeping him out as well. Yeah, really good shout, mate. Okay, so I had three names to consider uh, for the right back slot. One of them was Luke Young. Um, only got the seven caps, but a very consistent uh, player uh, for Charlton, Tottenham, Aston Villa. Um, I think he deserved certainly deserved a few more. Another one, he's on Sky. He's on the on BBC. He's all over the shop um, as a pundit, but burst on the scene as a player. Um, play, can play centre back as well. It's Mark Richards. Um, only the 13 camps, which was surprising. I thought we got a lot more than that. Um, but uh, you know, I was, was frozen out under Capello um, for some reason. And uh, yeah, I thought he. Uh, I know he had his injuries towards the end of his career, but I thought Mark Richards deserved to play a bit more. Was overlooked harshly. Um, but the player I picked, um, underrated player, 
anyway, especially at club level. Um, but definitely for England played was unfortunately in the wrong era because um, of the world class uh, number one right back at the time. Um, so the player I've gone for is Lee Dixon. Um, so he only got the uh, the twenty two caps. Um, and as I say, if it weren't for you know the world class Gary Neville for May United, and obviously never played brilliantly for England as well. Um, yeah, just in the wrong era, unfortunately. And, and yeah, Lee Dixon was key to uh, Arsenal's. Uh, you know, success under Arsene Wenger um, and even in the early 90s as well. Um, but yeah, if it was in any, any other era, Lee Dixon would have got well over mm. 60, 70 caps at the minimum. So uh, yeah, so just the 22 caps with Dixon. But yeah, he's uh, he's my right back. Uh, Dennis, who have you gone for? Well, Dixon was my right back until about 45 minutes ago. Uh, because I got remind, I reminded myself, remind myself <clears throat> of someone who, similar era, but because of, injuries usually just before tournaments as well meant that despite being Liverpool's regular right back throughout the 90s he actually only got eight caps mm. uh, and that is a gentleman called Rob Jones who yeah. had to retire yeah. a while at West Ham in 1999 he was meant to be the first choice right back in Euro 1992 but got injured he would have been fit for the 94 World Cup but Taylor cost us well and Koeman <laughs> cost us qualification 96 he was injured but Prob never would have been number one around that time anyway. And the fact he only got eight caps and several defenders that came through the academy not long after at Liverpool, i.e. Carragher, uh, said that he was one of the best players he'd seen when he was also in the academy, but younger and things like that. Reckon he would have been would have got 60, 70 caps if it weren't for his injuries. Obviously, there's a bit of Liverpool bias there. But for me, you know, honourable mention would have been was Dixon and potentially um um, uh, Klein, who Mark said, but because of injuries and things like that, I'm going to go with the obscure Rob Jones. That's a really good show. We've got three different right backs <laughs> so far. Let's see if uh, Charles can complete the uh, list. So, uh, Charles, who you gone for, mate? You'll be very happy to know, Biss, that uh, Bill, that I've uh, I have gone for a, a well, I mean, both my honorable mention and my main selection are very uh, sort of well. They're not ones that you'd necessarily are top of your list, but we'll see if you boys agree with me. Um, so my honourable mention goes to one Matt Lowton, who used to play for Ooh. Burnley and Villa, wow. um, who now, funny enough, plays in the Northern Premier League Division One West Club, Witten Albion. So quite <laughs> a dramatic <laughs> downfall for him. The prestigious, <laughs> the, the prestigious club. But, um, but, Yes, the prestigious. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call him up now, but in his prime, I thought he was a really, really solid right back uh, for Villa and Burnley. Um, he actually scored a couple of stunners as well while he was at both clubs. Mm. Um, he'd often yeah. end up in the sort of one goal against of the one against us. At the end. Yes, yes, exactly. No, he goes off. Oh. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, Matt, Matt Lowton, I thought, was just an honourable mention. He never got an England cap. And I thought, you know, with all the kind of weird players that did end up getting a cap for England, I thought he yeah. could have at least got a couple. Um, now, this one is... So, my main selection uh, is a player that still plays, still plays at a very, uh, very high level, and that is James Tavernier, right back for Rangers. I've been a mm. massive fan of James oh, Tavernier okay. for, for quite a few years, um, to the point where, but like, I've always thought that West Ham should have signed him, um, you know, uh, especially before sort of, you know, Rangers were um, doing one Europa League. I think you could have you could have picked him up for no, no more than 10 million, maybe even less. Um, but he's he's always just such a solid player um, and he never got an England cap, um, mostly probably because he played for Rangers and therefore, um, you know, I mean, players can get away playing in Saudi Arabia and, uh, you know, blooming Germany or America or whatever, but Scotland <laughs> seems to be where um, mm. the limit is set. Um, but no, James Tavernier has always been a solid player, always been a player I've respected, um, hasn't had a single England cap, and I think he should have at least got a couple during his career. And also, four different right backs, lads. Good going. Right. So, um, <laughs> stick with you, Charles. So, um, who's your first centre back? So, my first centre-back selection is, well, this one is a player that I didn't um, I didn't actually watch at all 
in my time, in, you know, in my time watching football. Um, but it was such a shock to me that he was so um, underutilized by the English team that I had to put him in. And that is Mr. Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce never, ever made an England appearance. So that just completely shocked me because he was a very, very good player. Um, he made a couple of appearances. Uh, he made some appearances at England youth level uh, and he made one appearance in that um, highly um, that highly uh, sought after England B team. Um, but, you know, <laughs> despite playing over 700 games of professional football, at a very good standard. Uh, Steve Bruce was never uh, given the opportunity to shine in the England shirt. So, uh, yeah, Steve Bruce is my first centre back selection. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Um, Dennis? I mean, Steve Bruce was one of mine, but uh, another player that only has two caps that, again, didn't really see much live, but did see him on highlights. He has probably his biggest career highlight that I know is assisting uh, a very infamous Tony Adams goal, where one centre-back assists the other up the pitch. Um, but Steve Bald, who was a linchpin at Arsenal's mm. defence, only got two England caps. Um, admittedly, he was in an era where you got the likes of Tony Adams, um, uh, Tony Adams, Southgate, and uh, Martin Keown, who also you could argue were good, well, certainly good enough to be England starting centre backs. But so I'll go. For, Steve Bruce is in there, but I will put in Steve Bald as the backup option on that one. Uh, will be my selection. Therefore, should have had more caps. Yeah, great stuff, Mark. Yeah, I thought about Steve Bold as well. Obviously, just a couple of caps. Um, you know, five hundred club games. You know, incredible, really. But I think, um, yeah, obviously, with the players that Dennis has just mentioned, that was quite difficult for him. Um, but the one that I've chosen for is my first choice. Um, made his debut uh, under Terry Venables. Uh, was Steve Howie, uh, Newcastle. Uh, homegrown player, um, four caps for England. Really, I thought, I guess he probably didn't play as much, partly because of the players that maybe were in front of him. You know, Tony Adams, obviously Southgate emerging, but also as well, we all know uh, in the mid nineties how leaky, despite how many goals they scored at the other end, how leaky uh, the Newcastle defence was. And um, the Tainers. exactly that probably counted against him um, a little bit. Um, to be honest, but if you look at his career, you know, over 300 games, uh, at, you know, domestic level, you know, Newcastle, Man City in particular. Um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a surprise because I vividly remember watching his debut and just thinking, wow, this guy looks the business at centre half. But um, yeah, obviously didn't didn't materialise in the end, was in the Euro 96 squad, but obviously didn't didn't play. Yeah, no, good stuff, mate. All right, so my first at the back, like you, Charles, is Steve Bruce. Um, yeah, despite being part of uh, I mean, a key part of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson's title winning um, teams at, at Man United, um, to get no caps whatsoever is absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, he's definitely going in. Um, other names I considered, um, uh, one was Jonathan Woodgate. Um, just the just the eight caps injuries absolutely ruined his career. Obviously, went to Real Madrid, but you know, played well at Leeds and Newcastle in the early 2000s when he qualified for Champions League under Sir Bobby Robson. Um, so, uh, another one who, and again, is on Sky, does a really good job, um, but was uh, fortunate to play in, a, in an area where we were stacked with top quality centre backs is Jamie Carragher. Um, got the 38 caps, and uh, yeah, possibly. You know, if he if he didn't play in an era with Sol Campbell, John Terry, Rua Fernand, I think he could have got a lot more. Um, you know, obviously he was part of the uh, Liverpool 2005 Champions League Champions League winning side, and you know he was one of the best centre backs in Europe at the time. But unfortunately, so was Campbell, Terry, and Fernand. So um, you know, so he was yeah really unfortunate to play in that particular era. Um, but so I've gone for Steve Bruce, um, and we'll, we'll flip back round. So my second centre back. Um, Mark, I did consider Steve Howie as well. Uh, another one is Steve Bruce's partner at Man United, uh, Gary Pallister. Um, so he only got the 22 caps, Gary Pallister. Again, um, it was unfortunate to play near where we were um, you know, high on top quality centre-backs. Um, but my partner, alongside Steve Bruce, again, like Woodgate injuries, absolutely ruined his career, but it was such a natural uh, player. Um, I think we could have played for the likes of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich if he stayed clear of injuries. And it was Deadly King. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just the 21 caps, 
a couple of goals. Um, yeah, just uh, a chronic knee injury sort of uh, plagued his career, really. But, um, you know, when Tottenham last won the trophy, which is a heck of a long time ago, 2008, uh, you know, he hadn't played for weeks and then plays in the final with barely any training. Marks Didier Drogba out of the game. Tottenham win the, win the trophy. So, um, yeah, I mean, even with the, you know, as mentioned, uh, you know, Campbell, Terry Fernand, the league king was, was as good as them. I would say, but uh, just you know, just the injuries unfortunately ruined his, his career. So uh, yeah, my two centre backs are uh, Lily King and Steve Bruce. So um, uh, Mark, who's your second centre back? I think um, I just want to add what you were saying about Ledley King there, that because um, if you think really, obviously it was Rio and and um, and John Terry weren't it really from his era that were the regular the regular two, I guess the main partners. But I'm convinced that if Ledley King hadn't have been injured, John Terry wouldn't have played for England. I think that King would have gone on and made 100 caps. He was miles better than than John Terry, much better footballer um, and, a, and a better defender, in my opinion. Could, could, could play in midfield as well. Yeah, yeah. No, good, you know, fantastic footballer. And I think the fact that Capello called him out of retirement for that ill-fated World <laughs> Cup in yeah. South Africa, I think, again, you know, it tells you all about the shortage of, of options, the real quality that we had um, at, at that point, obviously, once... Um, Obviously, once Rio uh, he got injured, then he did his knee in, in the, yeah. in the uh, one of the pre games. But um, yeah, another honourable mention for me, um, which I was always surprised because he, he played a lot for the under twenty ones uh, and was really known for his time really at Newcastle. Uh, was Stephen Taylor? Uh, no caps, um, two hundred and fifteen oh, yeah. games uh, for Newcastle. Um, yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but again, I maybe he was playing in an era when perhaps. Newcastle yeah. were, were struggling a little bit, I think, to be fair, and obviously a couple of relegations as well in in there at, at various points. You don't really want too many players in your squad, do you? That are that are maybe low on confidence. Yeah, um, and I don't think. Sorry to interrupt. I don't think he improved since the under twenty ones though as well. Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 don't, I, I don't think yeah. he's. I don't think he's level raised into the senior sort of setup, which was surprising because he was under twenty one captain, I believe. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you were, you know, same era as um, as uh, as as Nobes. Um, but my other choice, and again, I think as much he didn't play as much for England, probably because of the um, of the quality that we had there, but also as well probably his uh, well known refueling habits off the pitch. Uh, but I'm going for Razor Ruddock. <laughs> Uh, one <laughs> one cap for England. Um, yeah. You know, wait. We all know. You know, look, fantastic player. Really, you know, loved the tackle. Great pass with the of the left foot. And I think actually he made his debut in the same game as Steve Howie as well. And again, just thinking, wow, who you know, as a nine year old, thinking, who are these guys? These look amazing. Um, but you know, the reality probably not not quite as 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 as, uh, as, <laughs> as, as, as my nine year old self probably thought then. Um, but I mean, I, I and obviously we saw him. He had about forty odd games, didn't he, for us as well. When he was a he was a decent player for us, even if that waistline was ever expanding. But I think as he was probably a little bit maybe of a liability off the pitch, which is probably why he didn't add to that solitary cap. I would suggest. Yeah, I think he got more caps for Harry's heroes than he did for England. So, um, <laughs> well, he definitely uh, drank so, more pints. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look good, look, look, look good though, Razor, to be fair, nowadays. Yeah. Um, all right, so Charles, who's your second uh, centre back, mate? Um, special mention uh, was to Ledley King. Obviously, injuries prevented him from ever getting more caps, but that was a big case of, um, you know, what if, really? Um, but yeah, I, jo I joined you to be honest, Bill. Uh, Jamie Carragher. Um, I was quite shocked that he only had well under forty caps. I think it was thirty-eight in the end, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. But as you say, just just his luck, really, that he was up against some some other defenders that were maybe a little bit more in form at that point in their careers, and and maybe a little bit better as well. But yeah, I mean, Jamie Carragher um, will be partnering Steve Bruce in my England or. Oh, Underappreciated eleven. Yeah, nice one. Full of there. pace of centre half there, lads. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a real it's a real I've got, I've got real... Lily King, I'm alright. Are, are we playing San Marino? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it's, Andorra, it's, mate. It's a Andorra. real big Sam <laughs> 11, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so, Dennis? Well, uh, I've got two honourable mentions uh, with special reasons. So, one of them 
actually never got capped for England. In fact, both of my honorable mentions never got capped for England. Uh, one is mainly because he wasn't consistent at playing consistently enough at club level because he followed the money a little bit. And also, he played for teams that had some really good centre halves, and that's Michael Dubry when he was at Chelsea and Leeds. Uh, he was certainly good enough to play for England in that team, especially under Kevin Keegan, where the centre backs changed every five minutes. Uh, so it's a little bit surprising he didn't get any caps. And the other, who, you know, we all doubted this player until we saw him firsthand, until we saw him play for West Ham in lockdown and in Europe, and that's Craig Dawson. Now, <laughs> um, there's semi-joke, but also... The form he was in, the form he was in in the lockdown season should have got one England cap for me. Southgate was looking at him as well. Yeah, Southgate was looking at him. And also the fact that he was in the under-21s, he played all the group games at the Olympics for Team GB as well. The fact yeah. he never really got a look in, he even called up to a squad. I think he should have got more. There's a small amount of bias, but he's one modern example. Whereas right now... Any really English centre back will get a cap at the minute. Like Colwell yeah. looks pretty good, but the fact he's gone straight into the team, there is an element of going back to the Capello years of where, depending on who you play, like Wes Brown getting picked despite never playing for Man United was always a hindrance. But my second centre back is someone that's been an honourable mention, but he's going in my team because of how brilliant he was. And if it wasn't for the injuries, and it would be Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, Jonathan Woodgate, very similar to the Lee King, in my opinion, that if he wasn't injury prone. I think he actually, John Terry doesn't get his chance in the England team and he's starting in Euro 2004 alongside Sol Campbell. In my honest opinion, if it weren't for the injuries, the fact he couldn't really get a run of games and <clears throat> less said about his beginning at Real Madrid, the better, but he did win people over eventually there and arguably played some of his best football at Middlesbrough, but by then Terry and uh, Ferdinand were the linchpins and he was still getting injury problems. So because of that, Woodgate gets my second spot. No, really good stuff. All right, let's move on to uh, our left back. Um, I found this quite a difficult one, lads. I won't lie. Um, Dennis. Oh, thanks for going to me first. So my left back <laughs> is someone Get out of the way. Has Get out of the way. a shocking level of England caps. Similar reasons to Lee Dixon, and he's an ex-teammate of him. And it is Nigel Winterburn. Oh, what show? Nigel show. Winterburn is my left back with honourable mentions to um, to Leighton Baines. Yeah. See ditto with Ashley Cole, and also on the Scotland rule that Charles pointed out, <laughs> Michael Ball, which is a bit of a stretch, but I think he was good enough to get oh, more yeah. than one England cap, considering some some of the injury problems and the in issues we had around. Did he play his friend's first game? He did. He possibly did. He did. He did. Yeah. 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 He was at Rangers at the time, and then, but he went on to play for some pretty good clubs like PSV Eindhoven and whatnot. He weren't a bad player. He only got one England cap. Whereas, you know, I don't think he was an awful lot worse than Wayne Bridge, if I'm being honest. I'm not worse, yeah. sorry, I'm not saying Wayne Bridge bad, but like he weren't far off that level, in my opinion. Nowhere near Ashley Cole. But yeah, Winterburn for me is the left back in this situation. I don't think he ever actually got called up to a tournament, yet he was Arsenal starting left back for a decade. Yeah, that's a really, really good shout. Uh, Charles? Yeah, well. It was my left back was uh, Leighton Baines. I thought thirty caps under the forty. Uh, you know, perennially good player for Everton. Um, yeah, I thought Leighton Baines. I mean, he's one of the best set piece takers in recent years as well. So that obviously was a big trait of his. But yeah, uh, I thought Leighton Baines probably could have had a few more appearances. No, it stuff. was a hard so, um, one, so I don't have any honourable mention. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my left back, I, I had a few names, but none that really stood out. Like I was um, um, and alarm about this position for ages. So um, one's been mentioned already, or a couple been mentioned. Leighton Baines um, obviously did really well at Everton. I think Wigan as well, early in early Premier League career with Wigan when they got promoted. Uh, Wayne Bridge, you know, similar to Lee Dixon, you know, was very unlucky that the world class Ashley Cole. <laughs> Was it, you know, ahead of him in the pecking order throughout his England career? Um, you know, first his caps, still a good amount, but, you know, if he didn't have Ashley Carthy, he would have got a lot more Wayne Bridge. Um, another one, he only got the two caps, played well for a very consistent player for, you know, Blackburn and Aston Villa, Stephen Warnock. Um, so he only got the uh, only got the two caps. Uh, another one um, played in, in the early games on the Sven Gorn Eriksson was Chris Powell. 
Um, I think he, mm. only, I think he only got the five caps. I think played well for Charlton, in, you know, under Alan Kirbishley in that particular period. Possibly could have got a few more. But the player I picked was uncapped. Um, you know, was a real consistent player for um, for Aston Villa in the nineties. Um, you know, small, small in stature, but big in heart. <laughs> it's uh, I've gone for Alan Wright. Um, so uh, <laughs> but he only come in at five foot four, but he was a real hard man and a good, consistent left back. So a bit of a surprise he didn't uh, get at least at least one cap, got none at all. So yeah, I've gone for Alan Wright. So uh, Mark, I'm I've got so many here. It's 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 ridiculous. Um, just sort of mentions a couple that you guys obviously have already said. Leighton Baines. Um, although I don't remember him playing as many games as, as what was fed for England, but that's just my memory, maybe. Uh, Nigel Winterburn, obviously, as you guys have said, um, you know, uh, Graham Lasso, um, as well. Um, although having played 37 times, I'm not sure that's necessarily an underrated player, but there you go. But I think the, the three that really I was looking at that were probably underrated uh, one, Andy Hinchcliffe, um, really oh, good sure. left foot. Uh, seven caps, but I think he's probably more famous now being a commentator being a uh, than yeah. what he ever was as a footballer. <laughs> um, a slight bias on on this next one is is Paul Konchesky. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, I think yeah. that 2006 season, he was you know when we uh, oh, no, no, I agree, Mark, I agree. In the yeah. league, I think you know really consistent, but like virtually every player, the following year his his form fell off of a cliff. Um, but the one that I have picked, um, and I'm surprised that none of you guys have mentioned him, and yes, this is a massive bias, um, is, is Julian Dix. Um, fantastic oh, left-footed yeah. player, but I think, you know, could get up and down all day long. Injuries, I think, ruined him a little bit. Um, I think probably some of his uh, decision-making on the pitch, you know, with his wild tackling as well at times, I think left left probably wouldn't have been <laughs> an ideal player to have for the... Uh, Bit, bit like Razor Ruddock then. Bit of a... <laughs> yeah, well, we would, we'd have ended up with nine men on the pitch, so it would have been quite an intro. You know, it would have been oh, like oh, Tottenham the other week, so... but, you know, no, no one ever would no, have mentioned no, it. No highlight, no highlight. I mean? like, no high line there. <laughs> um, obviously, there was rumours that he was going to be in the um, the Euro 96 squad, uh, uh, Dixie, but the rumour was that he had to grow his hair. Um, I mean, how, how true that is. And he apparently turned around and snubbed it and said he'd rather spend the summer with his two bulldogs uh, down <laughs> here in Essex. So, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, fantastic player. We, we should have picked him just for the penalties because he would have scored, yeah. right? Well, I think I'd rather have him and then Gareth Southgate. Um, so, uh, <laughs> no, good shout. I thought you were going to say Aaron Cresswell for a minute. Um, so, uh... <laughs> well, right. he has got magic out on like me. So, yeah, I should have done <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's our uh, goalkeeper back four. So let's move into midfield. So uh, go on the right hand side. So um, I'll go first on this one. So uh, one play got 30 caps, but was unfortunately nicknamed Sick Note. Or he did play a lot more games than I thought, but um, for club <laughs> and country. But a really good player was Darren Anderton. Um, yeah. Again, if you didn't have, uh, he did play obviously for 98 World Cup, bit of year in '96. But you know, obviously David Beckham was flying around that time. Um, so, uh, if it weren't for maybe Beckham and a few others in that position, if it, Anderson could have got a few more. Um, one player as well uh, was a Blackburn top winning um, player. Uh, it was Stuart Ripley. Uh, only, got, only, got, <laughs> only got two caps, but uh, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't, didn't get more caps. Uh, and another one um, could play across the whole midfield, a really versatile, industrious player, you know, you know, feel like he's drinking and on talk sport, but he's a really underrated player just in the Premier League era, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, particularly for Arsenal, is Ray Parler. He only got 10 caps. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit surprised that he uh, got... I didn't, I didn't, I knew he didn't have too, ma too many, but only, only getting 10, I thought he had a lot more than that. But, yeah, probably should have done, but we're stacked with midfielders, sort of calling midfielders around that at the time. But the, uh, the player I picked for the right-hand side, again, he could play across... The midfield and as a second striker, got 37 caps. It was never really a consistent England regular. Should have built built the team around him. Um, is Steve McManaman, and <laughs> uh, you know less about him as a commentator the better. But what a player he was. Um, as I say should have built the team around him. Did brilliantly at Real Madrid, scoring the uh, if it's the Champions League final of 2000. And yeah, Valencia, yeah. So yeah, I mean that late 90s period, he should have been one of our first choice players. But in in 98. Not the first bad decision Glenn Hoddle made. He uh, barely played in that tournament for England. So, yeah, McManaman, yeah, strange one. I think if he played in this era, my goodness, he, he would have got a lot more caps. But, uh, 
wrong era in terms of the style of play. Didn't really get the best out of him, which was a shame. So, yeah, I've gone for Steve McManaman on the right hand side. So, Mark. Yeah, I've I've got him as a, as an honourable mention, McManaman. Um, you know, fantastic player for me. Hundred uh, Premier League assists, which ranks him fifth in the all time uh, uh, list. Uh, you know, yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed watching him play. And if you think as well that he spent a bit of his, you know, three or four years over in in Madrid um, as well, to be that high up is a is a pretty good uh, achievement, I think. Yeah. Um, I've also got a, a mention uh, for Tricky Trev, Trevor Sinclair, uh, 12 caps. Obviously, got a little bit fortunate with getting into that uh, 2002 World Cup with the with the injuries. I think it was uh, Danny Murphy, I think, at the end, he ended up replacing yeah. Who I think would replace somebody else um, <laughs> in, in 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 the squad, but I've I've kind of as I said before I've I've kind of gone for a slight variation in my formation. I've got a four four two diamond, uh, so kind of like playing in the uh, sort of the right hand side if you like of that central midfield area. Um, I've gone for Lee Bowyer as my pick. Um, just the one right. cap for England. I mean, yeah. there was a period where he was you know all the off field stuff that was going on, and he was yeah. you know tearing up the Champions League for that fantastic Leeds team in that, you know, early sort of 2000 period. Um, why that, how that Leeds team didn't win a, a trophy, by the way, is is, is beyond oh, me. Yeah. They, they were a fantastic team. Should have um, done, I don't, underachieved. Yeah, they did really. And I think that that, I think, you know, when he came to West Ham the first time, obviously a lot of people didn't want him there. Um, and I, it, we never really saw the best of him, to be perfectly honest, while it, while he was there. And he, I, I don't think he wanted to be there, especially as we were, were a struggling team as well at, no, that, he was, uh, at that moment he, in time. Yeah, he was forced to leave Leeds. I think we only signed him for a couple hundred grand because yeah, yeah, he was, was he was out of contract, and they were saying we can't either. It was something like you had to take like a pay cut of like sixty percent or sign for West Ham for about seventy percent of what he was on. So. Mm took the West Ham option because he was leaving Leeds in the summer anyway. Yeah. So, yeah at least yeah. were free fall financially as well. Yeah. Leeds were like, we can't afford your wages. You've got to go down to like 30 grand a week. And he accepted something like 50 here or something. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean a, 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 you know, great, you know, sort of a typical English centre midfield player in, in many respects that he could get up and down and he, you know, he just wouldn't stop running when he, when he was on form, um, you know, say one cap, I think unfortunately a combination of probably the players that were coming through at that time, if you think, you know, obviously Stephen Gerrard and, and Frank Lampard and obviously, you know, Paul Scholes in, in particular meant yeah. that he probably didn't get as many opportunities that he did. But I think a little bit similar to Woodgate for me as well, that the off field stuff probably meant that he weren't ever gonna, you know, add too many caps uh, mm. to, to his total, unfortunately. No, good stuff, mate. Um, Charles? Yeah, Mark's mentioned both my um, honourable mention and my starter. <laughs> my honourable mention was Trevor Sinclair. Uh, very solid option. Again, as Mark said, injuries were kind of the reason he was called up in the first place. Um, and he was the one that was called up to replace my starting right-sided midfielder, Danny Murphy. Uh, Danny Murphy only made nine appearances for England. Um which shocked me a little bit, but I mean, it doesn't shock you when you look at the context of, you know, David Beckham starting. I think Murphy was called up to replace Steven Gerrard, I believe. Um, yeah. As the injury in the squad. Um, but yeah, I mean, Danny Murphy is a very, very solid player. Um, and I was surprised that he only had nine appearances to his name. But again, yeah. you can sort of understand why during that era. It's a good shirt, Danny Murphy. I, I thought he was more of a centre midfielder, personally. I didn't know if he was, I didn't know if he was a wide player. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a good shout though, anyway. Um, uh, Dennis? So, uh, neither my honourable mention or my mention has been um, brought up. Uh, Kieran Dyer has got 30-odd caps for England, but almost all of those were substitution appearances to wind down because he was coming back from an injury or going off injured. If it wasn't for his injuries, Kieran Dyer would be remembered as an absolutely sensational player. He was very mm. unique. It was There was nothing really quite like him at the time. Um, but injuries and other health problems that are now catching up with him, like his liver problems, mm. sadly well ruined what could have been. Like, he was so... Like, like for people, you know, of younger than us, I don't remember, he was just so different. I remember watching him play for Newcastle and sometimes England, and he was he was just a different, totally different dimension. 
it was the only thing I could really compare it to was like when England brought on Peter Crouch needing a goal, but not quite the same, but being like the whole style of play changed when he came on. Suddenly we were trying to run through defences instead of knocking it and crossing it in. And it was something we were really lacking at the time. And that's why I feel that if we had more caps, similar or the similar mould of McManaman, but because of McManaman's uh, um, like fixation at Euro 96 and again in 2000, I figured like that sort of era, but that's why I went with Kieran Dyer. My honourable mention, and this is more, in my opinion, down to an attitude more than anything else, is David Bentley. Oh, if David yeah. Bentley had sorted his head out and got his, he got it out of his backside in his younger career, he's looking at 30, 40 caps. I'm not saying he's going to be he was going to be necessarily the heir to Beckham they thought he was because he's yeah. even with his attitude problems, it weren't as bad. It weren't Ravel Morrison levels. And he had a couple, he had one bad injury when he was starting to sort himself out when he was on loan at us from Spurs. And it was like, here's your second chance because Redknapp gave him a second chance to Spurs, if people remember. Um, but he had problems with injuries then. But and he was never the same after his big injury with us. But David Bentley, if he didn't like refuse to go to the under 21s because he thought he was Billy Big Boots or force a move to Tottenham when he wasn't quite ready for a, a move of that magnitude. I reckon he goes on to have a better England career than he did. But my pick is Kieran Dyer purely for how special a talent he was in comparison to the injuries. And although, yeah, he got quite a few caps, if you look at how many of them were starts versus substitutions, he got subbed on more than he started. Yeah, that's a good shout, mate. And obviously, he was unlucky, unlucky to play in an era where Sven Goran Eriksson played the same team every fucking game, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. he was really unlucky. Well, also with injuries as well. So, uh, good to see uh, Kim dive back to a bit of health after his operate. It, it was tra liver transplant, actually. Um, mm. uh, so, right, let's move to centre midfield. So, um, obviously, two to pick from. So, Charles, who's your first in the middle of the park? Well, I might as well get him out of the way. It's Mark Noble, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling, I mean, then. I've got a feeling we're all going to be picking him, but we'll see. I mean, I feel like, I mean, yeah, everyone's going to pick him, so I might as well be the one to, to spoil the party for everyone else. Um, I mean, what is there to say? I mean, he never, ever got a single England cap, um, and that was during an era where the England central midfield was never nailed on, so I don't know how he didn't... Especially in that 2006, uh, sorry, that 2015-16 season where um, he was instrumental in the the final season and at the bowling ground, and you know a lot of people were hoping that he'd be called up for the Euros. Um, yeah, I think it's it's crazy that he never actually um, got a single cap. He was obviously um, very instrumental in the uh, 2009 under 21s squad um, for the Euro Championships. I think he was captain for them uh when we got to the final um but yeah he, he he never got a single cap for um for england i think a lot of people outside of being west Ham fans will agree that he at least deserved you know at least one or two maybe um as i said in an era where the central midfield kind of area wasn't really a nailed on guarantee in terms of the players that we had um so yeah he'd be my starter um, and uh, unimaginatively, my um, honourable mention goes to Mr. Kevin Nolan. Exactly a double whammy. Um, yeah, I mean, Kev has been uh, has been a, a, a solid journeyman throughout um, top divisions in his career, um, and I think he got a couple at under twenty one level, but never got an England cap. Um, but I would I would say Noble was was more was yeah. was the one that pleased me off more for sure. Um, so Mark, who's your first centre midfielder? Yeah, quite a, um, quite an interesting one, really. A um, couple of mentions here: uh, Jamie Redknapp, fantastic passer of the ball, yeah, um, seventeen up. caps, one goal. Um, probably more famous now for his sketches adverts than, uh, <laughs> than anything else. Or, or, a, or a league of their own. And a league of their own, yeah. Um, although there's nothing wrong with sketches. Um, if anyone <laughs> wants to give me a deal, um, yeah, I've not, also not, I, I was, not sponsored. This, this yeah, <laughs> no, uh, well, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get, mate. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so him, uh, you know, yeah, fantastic. As, as Harry, as his dad might say, terrific footballer. <laughs> um, yeah, really good. I was surprised to see as well when I was looking at this that, um, I mean, Hargreaves um, won mm. over the 40 caps. I, I generally wasn't expecting that, especially um, 
I remember like because his career was from 2001 to 2008 for England, but I remember vividly around that um, that World Cup in Germany where every time he came on, everybody groaned that they didn't want him on the pitch. They didn't understand what it was that he brought to the team or anything. Um, but one of the well, it might have been against Ecuador or someone, but he was England's best player on the pitch by yeah. a, by a country mile. Mm. Um, you know, and he had a obviously when he did come over here to um, England for Man United, he was a proved to be, uh, you know, a, a really, really decent player. Um, Mark Noble, obviously, as, as Charles has just said, and and, and that I, I I agree. I think there was a there's a stat that always comes up that every single year, um, sorry, every player that was picked ahead of Noble in that squad in the midfield position, that Mark Noble outperformed them. Um, so how he didn't get in um, is okay, beyond me. Um, but the player that I've gone for, and it's a tragedy that he only won 34 caps. Yes, he is a West Ham player. Um, you know, obviously Man United, probably more known really for being a Man United player. Uh, Michael Carrick, um, yeah. the, the probably the best passer of a football of his generation. Maybe Scolzi from the middle of midfield, you could argue, but I think Carrick is definitely up there. How he never played more times um, is beyond me. And I think... Blames for know, it. was, and I think as well, a lot of it was in an era as well where they, you know... A lot of these players were only getting, you know, in the friendlies. He was, it was something that come on the other day. It was Wayne Rooney's um, debut, at, funny enough, at, at Upton Park. And we played Australia and Sven changed the whole team at half time. It was often this thing that was going on at that moment moment in time. And sort of remember scratching me thinking, well, why does Carrick never get an opportunity? I ne- never, never, ever understood it. Um, you know, super, superb player, great passer of the ball. And if he was playing now, oh. he would. He would make. I mean, he, he should have won hundred caps yeah. for England. I mean, it always used to make yeah. me laugh, as well as he did for England when they were making raving about Gareth Barry. I mean, now Gareth yeah. Barry made fifty caps for England. I will never ever understand that. Michael Carrick, mate, the the, the most underrated centre midfield player of his of his era by by a long way. Oh, no. and I hope that Australia's game, Mark, was, Mark, was um, Rooney's really debut, wasn't it? That Australia, yeah, it was, game. yeah, it yeah. was, yeah, yeah. Francis Jeffers was playing as well for that, yep. that game as well. That's a throwback, um, oh. yeah. So, Mark, I completely yeah, agree with everything you said. So, I've got Michael Carrick as one, probably the first player I named in this 11. I've got to be honest. Um, if he was Italian or Spanish, they would have built the team around him. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous mm. how he didn't play more. Um, a mixture of things. I think also the, he played for unfortunately for the wrong manager. We played a flat 4 4 2 instead of a, a, a diamond or you know. Allow the other players like Gerard Lampard Skulls to go forward, needed a holding midfielder. We, we didn't play flat four, playing Skulls wide left ridiculously. <laughs> um, and I think in an era as well where possession football playing through the thirds wasn't really England style, I don't, I can't actually remember a style of play that we had under Sven Goran Eriksson um, <laughs> in, in that golden generation. It was frantic, it was exciting, but no style of play whatsoever. No wonder we were knackered after 60 minutes every game. Um, yeah, and yeah, it was. Really good with his right foot, equally as good with his left foot, controlled games. I think what also held in the back, not his fault, but he wasn't as dynamic as a player like Lampard or, or Lampard or Gerard in particular. Um, quite quiet as well. So like I, I think for whatever reason that seemed to be held against him. And they only play one tournament game, which I think is that Ecuador game. Mm. Um amazingly. So imagine if you, yeah, if you played in this era, Mike, I think we would go all the way. And when mm. and when so if we if we add him, imagine him and Rice and Bellingham in our midfield now, ridiculous. Yeah. Just give us the trophy, lad. Seriously. Um, so yeah, uh, incredible that he only got thirty four caps and and one mean, meaningful match in the tournament. Absolutely crazy. So yeah, Mark Cat was probably my first choice in this lineup. Um, so another honourable we'll mention, yeah, Mark Jamie Redknapp. I think injuries obviously mm. like Woodgate and Ledley King easily could have played more. Jamie Redknapp was a good player. Uh, another player. He played for West Ham. He did have a, a good tournament in Euro 2012, but over, but over a 10 year England career, he played 18, 18 times, which is amazing. It's Scott Parker. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so you like it was him and Gerald in that Euro 2012 midfield under Roy Hodgson. But yeah, I mean, he, I think he played in like the Croatia. Um, I think it was like one Debacle. of the. Quali- yeah, the quali- I think he played there and then didn't play for like for four years or something, ridiculously. Mm-hmm. So, even though he was consistent for all the clubs he played for, Chelsea, Newcastle, West Ham, do you know what I mean? So, 
uh, you know, Tottenham as well, latterly. So should have got more than 18, uh, Scott Parker. Another one, um, only got the four caps, more of a deep line playmaker, sort of in the character type, was Tom uh, Tom Huddleston. Um, only got the four caps. I think he... Uh, poss- no, Mark's not having him. No, uh, I'm so, not having uh, that. Sorry, uh, mate. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, it was a decent play for Tottenham. I think he could have probably deserved a, a few more. But Michael Carrick's my, uh, is my uh, shout in first set midfield spot, uh, Dennis. Ah oh, well, this is this is what so many of mine have been picked. There's there's a couple that haven't. Um, so my pick in central midfield, and I'm classing him in central midfield, even though he's sort of more of a ten, is 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 Le God Letitia. <laughs> <laughs> you know how he got so few caps is disgusting. If he was any other nationality, he would have been a centurion. Um, and I think he could have qualified for other countries as well, being from Guernsey. I know he definitely could. He could have picked, although he could have picked um, any home country. It could have. He probably could have wrangled it that he picked France, being in Guernsey or anything like that. You know, like claiming like Napoleon was his great 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 grandfather, because <laughs> like, that's where he got. That's where he got. Uh, he's actually yeah. from. I believe from the same area that Napoleon actually ended up being (laughs) held prisoner towards the end of his life. (laughs) Little history fact for you there. But, um, but yeah, Leticia, I'm going to class him in my midfield mainly because my other options are quite defensive. Um, Even though he's a number 10, I'm assuming we're all going four, four, two, but yeah, it's, it's absolutely shocking. Like, yeah, his, his, the fact he was not the most athletic uh, and fitness based meant that Glenn Hoddle was never going to pick him in a month for Sundays for that 98 world cup. But Euro 96 under El Tell, surely he would have seen the value in him, having him in there for, instead of somebody else. Uh, right, let's, uh, we've all picked our first centre midfielder, so let's go around again and pick our second midfielders, centre midfielders. So, Dennis, go again. Oh, OK. So, I'll get my nice honourable mention out. That, now, I'm saying this caveating, and people in the comments can roast me for this, that I don't actually know how good a footballer this guy was because I never, I don't actually remember seeing him play football. But looking at the statistics... Lee Hendry only got one cap and he played hundreds of Premier League games for Villa. Good player, Lee Hendry, yeah. Good, li- yeah. But all by all accounts, from what I've read, what I know, good player, but I've never seen him play. So, again, only one cap. Probably should have got more, you'd think, over that period, considering he was a Prem player for about 10 years in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, but sadly, all, all, all my other sort of options have been picked. I mean, I had Murphy down as a central midfielder as well as Bowyer. Um, and obviously I did write down Carrick and Parker, uh, but they picked, but I'm going to, out of those ones, I'm going to say, uh, maybe get on my high horse a little bit again and say that Bowyer should have had more than one cap using. No, good stuff, mate. Right. So, um, to partner Carrick, uh, I was thinking Kevin Nolan, we mentioned him earlier. Um, I think even early days on the same hand, I said Bolton, I think he mm. really well could have potentially got a, Maybe off the bench. You know, we were stamping midfielders at the time. Maybe off the bench. You never know. Um, but yeah, to get no caps at all was ridiculous. Um, a player did play in France '98. Um, more of a probably a number ten. But um, if it were for these off-field antics, probably probably, probably should have got well over fifty caps. With Paul Merson um, got the twenty-one caps, three goals. One of the rare players who actually scored in our shootout against Argentina in '98. Um, I think, yeah, if it went for his off the field antique, he would have uh, got a lot more cash, certainly talented enough. And a similar theme to um, what you mentioned, Charles, about the 15 16 season. Um, I think Danny Drinkwater was somehow overlooked for that squad. Um, you know, he was part of the, obviously the Premier League win with Leicester alongside Angola Kante. That, you know, they had a great partnership in the field. He got three caps, should have, t- should have been, been on the plane. Roy Hodgson took Jack Wilshire, who played barely any games that season. Outrageous decision. So, Drinkwater should have gone. And as well as... Let it go, Bill. Let it go, mate. And as, <laughs> and, and, and as well as uh, this player I'm going to pick, it's Mark Noble. Um, so, uh, uh, obviously, like as you boys mentioned, he played a lot for the under-21s. But, yeah, it was so consistent for West Ham. And, you know, especially, you know, that 15-16 season, you know, where we didn't have the likes of Gerald or Lampard around anymore. Should have... I think he even got called up to the senior squad once a day. So, yeah, um, definitely deserve to uh, get a few caps. Mark Noble. So, yeah, Carrick and Noble are my uh, sent midfield. So, uh, Charles? Yeah, Noble and Carrick, my midfield. Um, so, I'm going to. So, Carrick, obviously, I think um, you've done a pretty good 
summary of why you and Mark have done a pretty good summary of why he should be included. Um, um, but yeah, my centre midfield pairing, I'm very happy with Noble and Carrick uh, commanding the centre of midfield. No, definitely, mate. Right, let's move on to the left hand side, uh, a problem position for England around in this era. Um, so, it's more of a traditional wide play again for play for West Ham is Matty Everington. I think uh, should have been at least called up, should have got a few caps. Um, you know, there were times where Wayne Bridge played at left midfield for England, so um, I think Everton definitely should have uh, got a few caps. Another one goes under the radar in England's 2002 World Cup qualification and um, played in the 5 1. A win against Germany uh, in Germany. I think he got an assist that day as well. Was Nick Barnby um, got the twenty three caps, four goals, good player. But yeah, maybe lots of form injuries, and he didn't didn't even go to the World Cup in two thousand two in the end, which was a, a surprise. Um, but the player I've picked again, another Blackburn uh, Premier League winner, um, played for <laughs> played for Leeds in the late nineties as well, early two thousands in the you know Champions League and UEFA Cup runs. Only got the three caps was Jason Wilcox. Um, so. Uh, again, another wide player, you know, and and the same was a problem position for England in 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 that in the era that Wilcox played. So yeah, good player, and uh, yeah, surprised he only got the three caps. So yeah, Jason Wilcox is my shout, Dennis. Well, interesting thing about Barnby in that two thousand two and two qualifier is technically he's jokingly argued that Gerrard's goal took a, enough of a deflection off of him that it was his goal. Oh yeah. He, he, yeah, he came yeah, out on yeah. Soccer AM with a big smile on his face, but he yeah, came out on Soccer yeah. AM when he was whole manager. Um, yeah, a, again, with Etherington, I vaguely remember there was some talk of him being called up for England for a friendly because of his form for us in the 03 04 season when we were having problems on left side ahead of Euro 2004. I vaguely remember that being on Sky Sports. That it was like Sven Goran Eriksson went to go watch West Ham, not just for Jermaine Defoe, but also to see Matthew Everton for the left hand side for a friendly. Uh, I think that was the one Defoe played in when he signed for Tottenham. Um, I've got an honourable mention on left hand side that's a, I'm scraping the barrel because uh, you've mentioned all my honourable mentions is uh, Alan Thompson, who <sighs> had a good little career. Did quite well at Celtic. One of Martin O'Neill's favourite players at Celtic got one cap. But the player that should have been capped for England more and would have would not have changed nationality had he been capped more was Wilfred Zaha. We should have played him more, in my honest opinion. Um, even though he weren't playing the best, he didn't officially change his allegiance until I think 2015 when he was playing quite well on a loan spell at Palace initially for Man United. I reckon we should have thrown him a bone and a few more caps to keep him sweet. And I reckon he would have been, certainly last couple of tournaments, he would have been in the squad. And he's that, it's, it's just a slightly different dynamic to Rashford going forward on the left that I think they would have complemented each other being subbed or switched and things like that. But for me, it's Wilfred Zaha who sadly switches allegiance because of lack of opportunities. Yeah, fair dues, mate. Charles? Um. One, my honourable mention uh, is a bit of a cheat because he played more on the right side, but I guess you could say he could play on the left as well. Um, Andros Townsend, um, I thought, you know, didn't play in a particularly strong England uh, squad, so probably could have got a few more caps. Um, I think he ended up getting about 13 or something like that. Um, but I'm going to go for an uncapped player for my um, overlooked England eleven. Um, as you say, Bill, we're not really sport for choice in this position, but I do think Mark Albrighton could have got a cap or two for England, mm-hmm. considering how vital he was to Leicester's Premier League title winning efforts. Um, I've always been a big fan of him, even at, um, when he started his career at Villa. I think he, I think on the opening day for Villa, I forgot which season it was, West uh, Villa played West Ham at home and he 10-11. absolutely, oh, yeah, he absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. um. <laughs> Winston but, Reed, yeah, I, they tore Winston Reid a new arsehole. That's when we found out <laughs> Winston Reid was a centre-back, not a right-back. Yeah, not a right-back, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think Mark Albrighton probably could have got a cap or two, um, especially in that sort of 2016 season. So, yeah, he'll be my selection. No, good shout, mate. Mark? Yeah, I've got um, yeah mentioned for Jason Wilcox. I think he would have been in the... Um, the Euro 96 squad, but he was he was cut. Obviously, didn't, didn't make the final 22, 23, whatever it was. And he would have gone to the Euro 2020, but injury um, stopped him from, from going there. Um, but I've got another, obviously, you've mentioned, obviously, Matty Everington, clearly got to have him in. But someone um, that I've been thinking about, 
Um, and it surprised me that he played as many times for England when you consider how injury hit um, he has been. And it's great. I saw some of him a couple of weeks ago in The Athletic. Uh, was Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Uh, 35 right. caps for England, seven goals. And, and kind of like the way that with my, the... As I say, I've got a diamond with, with my team. He could pretty much have... Probably not the holding role, but he could have played on the right or the left of the two centre midfield and probably even at a push, you could have had him in the number 10 role. Um, so kind of as much for his versatility, but he's, again, you know, it's good to see that he's making his career, he's making some sort of a, com- uh, a comeback as as such. Um, but the player that I've gone for, just because I used to love watching him play um, when he was at Tottenham and, and Everton and, and, and Liverpool in particular, is um, is Nick Barnby. I know he's already been mentioned. Um, 23 caps, four goals. Um, and a bit of a quiz question for you, lads. Um, can you did you can you name the two England managers that Nick Barnby scored the first goal for for those managers? So the first goals of that England manager's reign, who were they? Can Hodder you name it? Hodder and Sven. That is correct. Oh, Hodder okay. and Sven. Hodder and Sven. I was a bit of a bit of a quiz quizzy question there for you. <laughs> a terrific, fantastic player, and obviously one of the rare players as well to go from Everton to Liverpool as well. Yeah. Which is quite like direct, which is and then drop down anymore, loads of divisions to go to go to Hull. I think he played for them in Division Three. Uh yeah. League One League One. Yeah. Well the all division three is then it says. Uh so all right, let's uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on. Man. Let's move on to um probably are gonna be our easier well yeah, easier nice. in terms of <laughs> like this is gonna be our favourite uh position is the striking department. <laughs> Too many players to mention, so uh, Mark's going to get first dibs on your first striker. So so I think I might have missed a player out here, lads, if I'm honest. I'm not really sure, but um, uh, I think I've only got nine, so eight or nine. I think I've lost count, but I was going to mention the Tizier and Paul Merson in my, in my number 10 role as well. But as as you say, I mean, this is this is probably the hardest pick um, to see. So I'm, I'm not going to go through all of the honourable mentions that I've got here, just <laughs> purely into, because I'm expecting you guys yeah. probably yeah. to have a fairly similar uh, one. But two that I'm going to mention, um, first of all, Kevin Phillips. Um, oh, yeah. How he, yeah. I mean, he only won eight caps, no yeah. goals. Um, but in 99-2000 with his 30 goals, he's the only Englishman actually to win the European Golden Shoe at that at that point, which is... You know, amazing. No, one, no one's won it since, have they? No, that's right. No, yeah. which is surprising. You thought Harry Kane might have, have won it. Yeah, in the yeah, goals that he yeah. scored. Maybe he might win it this year with the, the number. Yeah, he's been in with, uh, Munich. Give it to him straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Get him now. So. Um, um, another honourable mention as well is to um, Andy Cole. Fifteen yeah. caps again. He played in an era where you know, obviously, you had Shearer and, and and all the rest of it, and only got oh, one yeah. goal. But I think he's, yeah. if you look at his club record. You know, Newcastle, 68 goals in 84 games um, and 121 goals in 275 games for Man United. Plus, he's a treble winner. Yeah. Um, I mean, that is incredible. I think that the fact that Glenn Oddle was a manager for a period of his career mm. turned around and said in the press conference that he needs about seven chances to score oh, a goal. Yeah. I mean, Ridiculous. looking at, listening to those numbers, you're thinking, well, hang on a minute. How, yeah. how does that work? <laughs> Again, another uh, bad decision what Glenn Oddle made as an England manager. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the fact that the greatest, certainly the greatest British manager of all time was picking him every single week. I mean, yeah, that's, that's that tells you all yeah. you need to know, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Um, but, the, but the two that I have gone for... Um, Sir Les, Les Ferdinand, um, pretty impressive record. Five goals in 17 games. Um, yeah, fantastic player in the way that used to just hang, hang in the air whenever the crosses come into the box. But I guess as well, you know, with Shearer and Sheridan being the first choice, it was almost an impossibility for him to play. Um, and, prob- and, and the other guy that I've gone for, I think probably the most natural finisher um, of, of, his, of this era, uh, Robbie Fowler. Uh, 27 caps, seven goals. I mean, again, probably another player that the injuries ruined the latter part of his career. But when he first burst onto the scene uh, for Liverpool, I mean, he used to just score goals for fun. Um, yeah, fantastic finisher. Um, as I say, probably the injuries ruined him. And, and with hindsight, um, when he because obviously went to Leeds, um, probably actually wasn't the right move when you think about the embarrassment of centre-forwards that they had at that time, you know, 
Smith and yeah. Viduka and Robbie Keane and and Bridges, and you sort of wonder why is he going to play? But um, used to love watching him play. Used to you know his volleys in particular were just were just out of this world. So yeah, they're, they're my two, uh, Fowler and and Sir Les. And so I should say when we did have Les Ferdinand as well at West Ham, I got a great appreciation for. Uh, for how good he actually was. Um, shame that he couldn't score enough goals to keep us up. <laughs> yeah, definitely, mate. So, uh, Charles, who's your first striker? Uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because I know that you and uh, Dennis will have a, a, a greater wealth of names to pick from, but it has to be uh, Sir Dean Ashton. Uh, mm. Dean, you know, just, I mean, his. who knows what his career would have been had he not got injured, um, had that terrible ankle injury um, whilst on England duty, ironically enough. Um, I mean, he's he is one of the best strikers. I mean, we talk about how poor West Ham striking options have been over the last couple of decades. Huh. He, he, he stands out as the best, along with Carlos Tevez. Him and Carlos Tevez do stand out as the best striking options uh, this club has seen in quite a long time. Um, and it's just such a shame that you know, Dean Ashton did not. I mean, you know, I think he made a couple, a handful of appearances for. One cap. England. Well, there you go. Um, Forty-five he made one minutes. Cap. Forty-five. He, minutes. Won, he made one one cap for England, but he could have times that at least by ten or twenty, um, at the very least, because he was such a good finisher of the ball. Um, and unfortunately, Sean Wright Phillips decided to take him out in training, and uh, <laughs> and we are left to. We we're left to wonder what could have been. Um, but yeah, Dean Ashton definitely goes straight into my oh well, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to, you know, even predict where his career would have ended up. So it's not so much that he was overlooked. I guess maybe you could you could consider him overlooked. Um, but I mean, realistically he just he just didn't get enough caps purely through bad luck, sort of like Ledley Cleaning in the sense that, you know, injuries just took him out. Yeah, no, completely agree, mate. Uh, Dennis, who's your first uh, striker? Oh, first striker, I mean, virtually all of my... Because uh, I haven't really got honourable mentions. I've got eight names that I could pick two from. Like, Pretty much the no same, yeah. 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 But I'm going to go... So we're naming one striker, because obviously because Mark named yeah. both of his, so we're just doing one. Just okay, do well, one, I'm yeah. going to get this one in nice and early so you don't stand Collymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't even have him on the list. Ah, Stan Collymore <laughs> got bugger all caps, like a handful of caps, less than yeah. three. Um, three. And great, are. great finisher. Yes, he had some off-field problems. We've spoken about several players with far worse off-field problems, you'd argue. Um, well, far more consistent, should I say. Uh, but, you know, he played for top teams. He scored top goals. He was just born in an era where you had six really good strikers that probably would have walked into the England team in that era we had just before Harry Kane, you know, where you have the likes of Ricky Lambert and whatnot being, for, you know, solid, you know, names on the back of a fag packet. Jay Bothroyd. Yeah, yeah. Or in my example, <laughs> names on the back of a letter. Um, <laughs> where exactly does it say guide dogs for the blind on this? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Stan Collymore, uh, I, there's, 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 one name that hasn't been mentioned yet, but I'm going to see if someone else mentions him first. But there's right. one other name I've got. But yeah, Stan Collymore is on there, down there as my number, as my starting striker there. Yeah, Only right. because I'm not going to pick ones that other had for variety. Because, uh, uh, be honest with you, Mark picked both of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, yeah, first, um, first striker, yeah, obviously there was loads to pick from. So... Loads have been mentioned already. Andy Cole, I mean, he made these first four caps under four different managers, which is mm. absolutely unbelievable. And then you're right, Mark, that quote by Glenn, Glenn Hoddle, I don't think it helped his cause either, as well as obviously the stacked strikers, you know, Shearer, Owen, Sheringham, Fowler, like a load of others. Um, Les Fernand, yeah, like, was fantastic for Newcastle. Um, all the clubs he played for, really, only got the 17 caps, five goals. Again, played, unfortunately for him, in the wrong era. Uh, Robbie Fowler, again, uh, just the 26 caps. Another one uh, played for Blackburn again. Another Blackburn winner. Um, but it was consistent for, uh, I think, early days in Norwich um, uh, as well. Um, not so quite, not quite as good as at Chelsea, but um, we, 
did well at Selwick. He's Chris Sutton. Only got the one cap. Um, thought he deserved a few more caps. Uh, but the first strike I picked, um, well, he's, he's, I'll play him off the front, but he's, he's Matt Letizio. Um So, uh, yeah, just the just the eight caps and, yeah, Lagarde and, yeah, should, like Manaman and Fiala should have built the team around him. But for whatever reason, maybe because he played for Southampton, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Just uh, obviously we had a load, load of other players in the forward positions, but yeah, should have uh, should have played a lot more Matt this year. Um We'll go around again for our second strikers. So um, and other names I'd consider, obviously Dean Ashton, uh, Kevin Phillips, as you said, Mark. Slightly more modern day, um, sort of mid two thousands with James Beatty as well. Um, only got the five caps. Banging in the goals of Southampton around that time, but he only got the five caps. Another one who would have gone to the 2002 World Cup if he uh, was an injured, had a motorbike crash, unfortunately, which ruined his career, was Matt Janssen um, for Blackburn. Um, unfortunately, got no caps. And uh, yeah, he was uh, prolific for uh, the Northwest team uh, in the early 2000s. But the uh, to partner Matt Tissier um, didn't actually represent. Um, England in any tournament, which is absolutely crazy considering his goal-scoring record for Arsenal in particular. He's on the match of day regularly. He's mm-hmm. on the overlap with Gary Neville. 33 caps, nine goals. It's Ian Wright. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I think for seven successive seasons at Palace and Arsenal, we scored at least 23 goals and they had 30 or more four times, won the Prem, the FA Cup, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. Uh, ridiculous that he didn't play in a, in a tournament for England. He should have done, um, especially Euro '92. We had like Alan Smith ahead of him. <laughs> so, well, no, that, 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 awesome, fitted, awesome. that fitted the style of play, didn't it? Under Taylor, that's the problem. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, Ian, Ian, direct. So, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Ian Wright and uh, Matt Lississier. So, uh, for me, so Dennis, who's your second striker? Oh, Matt Janssen was going to be my other really obscure one because you know he was also re- apparently he was all set to sign for Man United. Apparently as well. Wow. They were that because he was that talented, admittedly, in the second division. But there's a, a few names that haven't been mentioned. I'm not going to name all of them because I don't want to leave Charles fighting on scraps. But my <laughs> other, uh, my other starting striker, considering he scored 18 goals in the 97-98 season, uh, Dion Dublin only got four England caps, mm. and he was a much better striker than a lot of people remember. They just remember him as the guy that played centre back randomly for Leicester and done homes on home the hammer. The hammer. <laughs> yeah, that's what they know him for. But actually, in the nineties and very early two thousands, he was really good. He had a little bit of a renaissance the year we went down under Rodo, where he got thirteen goals that season, and uh, headbutted Robbie Savage, which is worth five. <laughs> for itself. Uh, but Dion Dublin, I mean, one honourable mention, I'm going to mention only because I'm confident Charles does not know uh, the, who this man is, uh, because he was around in the very early 90s, is David Hurst at Sheffield Wednesday, mm-hmm. who uh, was without an ankle injury, probably would have signed for Man United uh, instead of Eric Cantona. Apparently, he was first choice to sign for Man United uh, in 1992, but then got an ankle, pretty bad ankle injury, or 93, one of the two. As the story goes, absolutely astronomical goal scoring record in the late eighties, early nineties, until that injury as well. And I'm not actually just yeah, he got three England caps and still got one goal despite that. Um, but yeah, should have got more England caps. I'm not mentioned David Hurst, but for the fact he scored over 120 Premier League goals, Dion Dublin only getting four England caps is is criminal. Yeah, very much so, uh, Charles. Well, on my actual list, I mean, you know, we've said quite a lot of the names now. On my actual list, my my forward partnership was Dean Ashton and Kevin Phillips. Um, mm. But, you know, I think we can understand why Kevin Phillips would be a good shout. Yeah. Um, I've, just, I've just remembered one and no one has remembered him, um, oh. which he's, I mean, he's an awful pundit this season, uh, <laughs> is Daniel Sturridge. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, eight, he was eight brilliant goals, when he 26 went caps. I yeah. think you can have one injuries. There you go, Charles. More of a, you can have him, Charles. There you go. I'll have him. <laughs> well, there we are, lads. What a, what a, God, what an experience that was going for all those players and honorable mentions and all sorts. So, uh, thanks, lads. So, let's run through all our teams from a uh, goalkeeper to striker. So, for me, Noel Jamartin, Lee Dixon, Ledley King, Steve Bruce, Alan Ryan. Stephen Manaman, Michael Carrick, Mark Noble, Jason Wilcox, Matt Letizia, and Ian Wright. Dennis, your full team? 
Uh, my fault. I need to remember who I picked because I had to change so many of my original picks. <laughs> <laughs> for the Changing it live, time. I think. <laughs> oh, no, no. So, um, Martin, my, it was Nigel Martin, Rob Jones, Steve Bald, Woodgate, Nigel Winterburn, Kieran Dyer, um, Matt Letizia, Lee Bowyer, Zaha, Collymore, and Dublin. Nice one, Mark. Uh, so four four two diamond flowers Nathaniel Klein Steve Howie Neil Ruddock Julian Dix at the back uh, Carrick in front of the back four Boya Barnby uh, Matt Letizia um, Robbie Fowler and Les Ferdinand nice goals one. goals goals in that goals team, all, out there's, there's, all out attack all out attack there's, there's, there's drinks and pub fights in your defence as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> we ain't messing about uh, and uh, and finally Charles. Um, I had Tom Heaton and goal, I had James Tavernier right back, Leighton Baines left back, Jamie Carragher and Steve Bruce centre back. Um, my centre midfield was Noble and Carrick. Uh, on the right side, I initially had um, Danny Murphy, but I'm going to replace him with uh, Andros Townsend. On the left, uh, I had Marcus Albrighton, and then up front, Dean Ashton and Kevin Phillips. And, and, and Luther, Luther Blissett. Blissett. No, no, you've got to put Luther Blissett in now. <laughs> Oh, God, so many, uh, so many quality players. That should, yeah, they should have played for England more. If they did, could have had a tr- couple of trophies on our hands. Or maybe not. Actually, depends on the managers, actually. Should have changed the managers. There's going to be an underrated managers list, I'd say that much. Barely any good ones. Um, so, uh, well, that's thanks for that. That was, that was really great. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, maybe we're doing an over overplayed 11 soon. Got too many. Oh, that's a very long <laughs> list, Bill. That's a very long list. Again, okay, we'll have to pick our own teams for that one. <laughs> it's okay. I am 25 for that one as well. <laughs> All right, nice. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, I'll catch you soon. So, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Subscribe to Gadget Football if you're new. Let us know your uh, 11s in the comments below. Great to read those. And we'll see you soon. All the best. Take care.